Welcome to Christ Church. Welcome to Christ Church. Welcome to Christ Church. Welcome to Christ Church on the first Sunday after Christmas. We're delighted you could join us. Merry Christmas to you and to all who cross your paths. Blessed be God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. 
You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 147, verses 13 through 21, to be read together. Jerusalem will worship you, O God, and Zion will praise your name. For you have strengthened the bars of our gates and have blessed our children within them. You have established peace on our borders and satisfied us with the finest wheat. You send out your command to the earth and your word runs very swiftly. You give snow like wool and scatter hoarfrost like ashes. You scatter your hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against your cold? You send forth your word and melt them. You blow with the wind and the waters flow. You declare your word to Jacob, your statutes and judgments to Israel. You have not done so to any other nation. To them, you have not revealed your judgments. Alleluia. The second reading is from the book of Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, He gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May God's word only be spoken. May God's word only be heard. One of the great things that happens to me as a priest, especially among Episcopalians, is that people, when we're talking about God, will say, you know, I, I, I kind of have a little different take on things. I have a little different understanding of the way things are with God. And what I often say is, well, good for you, because that's actually part of our tradition. In the Jewish tradition, uh, reading the first five books of the Jewish canon called the Pentateuch, there are four different voices that are woven into each of those narratives, each with its own perspective. And in our own 
tradition and the Christian writings that succeed them, we don't have one gospel or two gospels, we have four. And we have four because there are different perspectives about both God and God's only Son, whom we celebrate in this Christmas season. There is a really wonderfully boring book that has been helpful to me, written by a New Testament scholar entitled The Churches the Apostles Left Behind. And he shows that in the 90 years that it took to write, uh, I'm sorry, the 60 years it took to write those scriptures ending in the year 90, you can look just at the New Testament material and see that there are seven different denominations already formed. Seven different communities that don't see God exactly the same way. So when John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, the Word was with God, all things came through the Word, he is going a completely different direction. There is no birth narrative of angels and shepherds. There are all sorts of things in John's Gospel that make that witness to the light and the truth, which we just heard, very different from all that preceded it. And that's a good thing. That kind of difference, that kind of variety, that kind of different expression of the same deep grace is part of what makes life wonderful, interesting, unusual. John was trying to answer a question that we don't ever ask anymore. And the question is, how can I become a follower of Jesus if I'm not Jewish? if I'm not familiar with the ways of the rabbi. And so John lays out a whole understanding of the divine pre-existing all things and coming into the world, and he uses the phrase word to describe that. Because in the Greek mind, which the majority of the world was at that time, the idea of the pre-existent logos, the Greek word for word, was very similar to the idea of the pre-existent breath of God, which shows up in the first chapters of Genesis. So people who didn't know the Jewish history could hear those disciples in the community of John talk about Jesus without referencing things that they didn't know about. This was the beginning of Jesus becoming accessible to everyone everywhere. And those images of light as opposed to darkness, and a word as opposed to silence, those those phrases, that understanding and explanation made Jesus available to a whole different group of people that otherwise might have been left behind. In this season of Christmas tide, as it's called, we rejoice that God has become present in our world loving us so much that God chose to come and dwell with us to remind us that God is present. God is understanding of the way the world is. And the fact that John experiences that and describes that differently than other Christians uh, uh, in his day is perfectly all right. There is no litmus test for how we love God. Just love God. This is evidence that that's what Jesus intended, that the story can be told in so many different ways, all coming back to the same God who in this season visits us to remind us that we may watch home alone, but we're never home alone when we think of our Lord and our Savior coming into the world. Continued Christmas blessings. The prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, 
for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and those in need. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially those we now name silently or aloud. We also pray for the victims of gun violence who died in Chicago this past week, and for those who inflicted this violence on our brothers and sisters. For all those who have died, we pray that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The announcements for today uh, are very simple. You're under very strict orders from the rector of Christ Church to enjoy this time as best you can. And we look forward to starting our regular series of gatherings at the soonest and earliest possible moment. God bless you this Christmas season.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we might faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My friends, these are the gifts of God still breaking into the world for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with great thanksgiving. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Together, let us pray our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to receive this blessing. Remember that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, whatever questions you carry with you, there is a place for you here because you are created in God's image and eternally loved. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.